You'll often hear the term human evolution thrown around, but few people actually understand what that means or entails. So in order to turn this from an abstraction into something real and understandable, we bring you five things you didn't know about human evolution. You may not know it, but women have consistently outperformed men in the realm of reproduction. For as long as humans have been around, women have had many more opportunities to pass on their genes than men, which practically speaking means twice as many women have passed on their genes in human history when compared to men. Well, you might ask how this came to pass, but the answer is a little complicated. This conclusion is based on the fact that the oldest female ancestor can be traced back further than the eldest male ancestor, but the details are what matter. From a reproductive standpoint, women are the limiting factor in reproduction, as they are the only ones that can carry and bear children and have a nine-month time window which imposes strict limitations on them. By contrast, one man can impregnate many women at once with little effort. This dichotomy has created an evolutionary pressure to favor women over men in the reproductive game, while men form competitive hierarchies to compete for women's attention, and women would then choose the winners of such competitions. The losers would more often than not die, whereas the male winners would have their pick of which females they chose to reproduce with. And this is how far more women reproduce than men in human history. Neanderthals were a separate species of human being that evolved in the frozen conditions of the world's past ice age. They had their own specific adaptations to this icy environment that allowed them to excel and prosper, but around 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, or modern humans, entered the scene in Europe, and there began an evolutionary war between these two closely related but different human subspecies. Unfortunately for the Neanderthals, the Ice Age environment they had flourished in was receding, and they were anatomically ill-equipped to deal with the new environment they were encountering. Homo sapiens, on the other hand, who was longer of a leg and less stocky, was far better adapted to this environment and also brought with him language, so that in the end, this evolutionary race was won by Homo sapiens. However, that does not mean that Neanderthals simply disappeared because they did not. It is clear from genetic evidence that many people, particularly people of European descent, have small fractions of Neanderthal DNA in them, meaning that while it is certain that there was conflict between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, there was also interbreeding on some level, which remains in some of us to this day. You probably didn't know this, but 70,000 years ago, the human race had an extremely close shave with permanent extinction. Around this time, there was a massive volcanic eruption in what is now modern Indonesia, referred to as the Toba eruption. The consequence of this was the release of soot and ash that blocked out the rays of the sun globally, such that in some spots, there was a drop in temperature of 20 degrees or even more. This global drop in temperature contributed to increased difficulty in survival for the human race, allowing for only small bands of people to survive and preventing large-scale expansion because the cold prevented the acquisition of the resources required to do so. A scientist and expert on the subject stated the following, quote, Toba dimmed the sun for six years, disrupted seasonal rains, choked off streams and scattered whole cubic miles of hot ash. Imagine wading through a giant ashtray across acres and acres of plants, berries, fruits, trees, African game became so scarce. Early humans living in East Africa, just across the Indian Ocean from Mount Toba, probably starved. Or at least, he says, it's not hard to imagine the population plummeting." End quote. It took tens of thousands of years to get from almost no humans to the seven billion we have today, which is quite a feat, but humanity is tenacious, if nothing else. Compared to other apes, we humans have some pretty low genetic diversity. The reason for this is probably because we are all descended from a small population that left Africa long ago. Genetic diversity is described by population geneticists using a measure called effective population size. Put in the simplest way, effective population size corresponds with how many people you would need to replicate the entire genetic diversity of the current full human population. The estimate for humans is around 15,000 people, which sounds like a lot, but when cited against a backdrop of 7 billion people, isn't very much at all. In fact, looking at other species, such as mice, yields some startling results, as certain species of mice have an effective population size of a whopping 733,000, which kind of puts us humans to shame. 
Despite the fact that you often hear that evolution has ground to a halt for humans, the opposite is true. Evolution is that force that transformed all organisms over vast expanses of time into an indescribably differentiated state of biodiversity, and there's no reason to believe that humans would be exempt from this. Isolated areas of the human genome have been studied by evolutionary biologists who have come to some rather startling conclusions. In fact, some areas of the human genome are currently under rapid selection, which in concrete terms means that mutations in these areas are spreading rapidly throughout the human population. Most of these mutations have been observed to be related to food tolerance, but some seem to be related to brain size and development, although it is not clear whether we are becoming smarter or dumber. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.